Okay, so welcome back to this next video on uh, the retinoblastoma protein. Now, no discussion of the retinoblastoma protein would be complete without a discussion of hereditary retinoblastoma cancer. Right, okay, so this is the motivating question, really. What would happen if I were to have uh, mutations in this retinoblastoma protein so that um, it becomes defunctional? What if the retinoblastoma protein was defunctional in your cell? I, what if a cell had no functional retinoblastoma protein? What would happen? Well, the E2F.DP complex would now be free in the cytoplasm, and it would be continuously going into the nucleus and binding to these E2F boxes and transcribing the, and causing the increase in transcription of the genes, uh, which are responsible for the replication of the DNA. So you will be continuously dividing the nuclear material, and you will continually be causing division of that cell. I would get a uh, huge division, uh, cellular division basically, it would cause a lot of cellular division, uh, uncontrolled cell division, which is one of those main characteristics of cancer, or at least of the um, uh, cancer genesis part, um, pathway. Right, okay, so retinoblastoma protein is basically an example of what is known as a tumour suppressor gene, or, well, actually, it should be the gene that codes for retinoblastoma protein. So RB is the protein, and the gene which codes for uh, retinoblastoma protein is the RB1 gene, basically. So let's just discuss uh, the RB1 gene for a bit. So, uh, the RB1 gene is a gene that is found on chromosome 13, and basically uh, you can, uh, you have two chromosome 13s, like so, so uh, you have two of these RB1 genes. So here is one of your chromosome 13s, maybe your paternal chromosome 13, and here is your maternal um, chromosome 13, and we are looking specifically at the RB1 genes uh, on this um, on this chromosome 13. So let's have a, let's demarcate those RB1 genes. So um, let's say this is the RB1 gene here. Okay, right. So you have two copies. The important thing to understand is that you have two copies of this RB1 gene. Right. And basically, this RB1 gene is what is known as a tumour suppressor gene. It's an example of a tumour suppressor gene. And basically, it's because this protein, the protein that's coded for by the RB1 gene, basically stops cell division. It's, its role is to stop cell division. It does not promote cell division. It stops cell division. And basically... Tumor suppressor genes are genes which you need a loss of function in, in order to uh, lead to cancer, basically. Whereas, contrast that to proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes are genes in the genome which promote um, promote cell division. So, for instance, cyclin D would be a proto-oncogene, and in order to get um, a mutation in cyclin D that's going to lead to um, cancer, then uh, you need a gain of function in cyclin D. If you, for instance, have a gene amplification of cyclin D, then you'd end up with far too much cyclin D being produced, and that would cause um, uh, it would cause um, excessive cellular division. So, contrast, understand the difference between a tumor suppressor gene and a proto-oncogene. A proto-oncogene, you need a gain in the function of that uh, gene to get uh, oncogenesis. And tumor suppressor genes, you need a loss of function in them in order to get uh, oncogenesis. Or oncogenesis just means um, cancer genesis, really, carcinogenesis, the formation of cancer. Right, okay, uh, so, this is the um, this is the important concept. If you have two genes of RB uh, two RB one genes, then in order to get absolutely no functional retinoblastoma in the cytoplasm, you need to knock out not just one of these genes. You need to knock out both of them. So you need a loss of function mutation in both genes. Okay, loss of function in both. It's not enough 
just to have a loss of function in one, that won't give you cancer because you've still got one functional gene that will still make some functional RB, and therefore you'll still potentially have enough RB protein in order to stop uh, the E2F and the dimerization partner from um, from being free in the cytoplasm. So you need a loss of function of both RB1 genes in order to um, get oncogenesis. Right, so this concept that you need two mutations, basically, in separate chromosomes, they may be homologous chromosomes, but they are, you know, separate chromosomes, this is known as the Knudsen two-hit hypothesis. Knudsen two-hit hypothesis. That you need, basically, two hits, two mutations to occur in two separate genes on different chromosomes in order to actually get cancer, the Knudsen two-hit hypothesis. Right, and now let's have a look at hereditary retinoblastoma. So what happens in hereditary retinoblastoma? Okay, so in hereditary retinoblastoma, what happens is you have, in all of your cells of the body, you have a mutation in one of your RB1 genes, i.e. one of them that you inherited from either your mother or your father is dysfunctional, basically. So this is hereditary retinoblastoma. Okay, so let me draw out the two genes again, and I'll show one of them being dysfunctional and one of them is still functional. Uh, if both of them were dysfunctional in all of your cells, then you would never have survived. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You'd have. You'd have died in embryogenesis. Um, uh, so it would. The, the embryo wouldn't have survived. Um, but. If you have only a loss of function in one of them from the germline, then um, the and the other one is still functional, then you can survive and you can be born. Right. So hereditary retinoblastoma. What happens is that one of the genes on one of your homologous chromosomes for retinoblastoma protein is dysfunctional. So let's say it's this one here. So this one has some mutation in it that means that it does not code, it does not make uh, a functional retinoblastoma protein. Okay, so potentially the whole gene could have been deleted, or it could have some mutation that means that the protein is made, but it doesn't actually work, it doesn't bind to the E2F DP complex, uh, or something along those lines. You've got a loss of function mutation, or an LOF mutation in uh, one of your genes for the re retinoblastoma protein. And then, let's say this is your other gene for the retinoblastoma protein, and it's perfectly functional. So here is your other gene. So this gene is perfectly functional. It's working well. So in all the cells of your body, you have one RB gene that is not working and one that is working. Now, basically, in order to get um, a problem, you see, you're at a huge disadvantage because a normal person with two healthy RB1 genes would have to have a cell that gets a mutation in one of their chromosome 13s in one of their RB1 genes, and they, that same cell has to get another mutation in this other RB1 gene. That is extremely unlikely to happen. But if you have hereditary retinoblastoma, all that needs to happen is in one cell, all you need to happen is get a mutation in this single gene here, and then you've lost it. You've got a cell which has uh, no functional retinoblastoma protein because both of the genes are now lost, and then uh, you will have no functional retinoblastoma protein, the E2F, DP complex will be free in the cytoplasm, and this will cause excessive cellular division, and it will lead to carcinogenesis. Okay, now, basically, um, people who are born with this hereditary mutation, they unfortunately, they don't live very long, generally. Uh, they get what is known as, the first place this ha generally happens is in uh, the eye, basically. So what happens is in the eye, Cells called retinoblasts um, get this um, second mutation uh, in their second RB1 gene, basically. And when that happens, they have no functional uh, RB left protein left in the cytoplasm, and that leads to excessive cell division. And basically, it leads to what's known as a retinoblastoma, a tumor forming on the retina, basically, a retinoblastoma. So I hope you understand what's happening in these people. They are getting, they have one mutation in this 
uh, in one of their RB1 genes from birth. So the nuts and two hit hypothesis doesn't apply to them. They only need one hit. They don't need two hits. They need one hit in this tumor suppressor gene in order to get cancer. Okay, and basically the first place that happens is in the retinoblasts of the retina. Uh, this other gene gets mutated uh, in just one of those cells in the retina, and that cell can then divide excessively and lead to uh, carcinogenesis, and that form of cancer is known as a retinoblastoma. Now, um, retinoblastoma is uncommon in people who do not have um, two, um, sorry, they do not have one of these um, mutations in the retinoblastoma one gene from birth. Um, but it's not unheard of, and it can happen. But the thing is, you, ha you are then obeying the two Nudson two hit hypothesis because in order for someone else to get, in order for someone who's got two healthy genes uh, from birth to get um, a retinoblastoma, what needs to happen is they need to get a mutation in, um, they need to get a mutation in a cell in one of their RB1 genes, and then that same cell has to be unlucky enough to get a mutation in the same gene on the other homologous chromosome, and that's very, very unlikely. So they need two somatic mutations in the same cell, whereas people with hereditary retinoblastoma uh, only need a single somatic mutation because they've inherited one in the germline, basically. So this only requires one somatic mutation. So people with this uh, genetic condition uh, are almost certain to get retinoblastomas um, and uh, usually they end up having to have uh, their eyes removed basically okay um, so it's a horrible horrible form of cancer